So in this video, we're going to continue to create custom struggle elements by creating a steel track type to go with our stud. Now, we're going to make this basically the exact same as we did with the stud, except with a couple minor differences. Um, we're going to make this the, the track horizontal and we're going to make the stud vertical. And uh, basically the main thing we want to take out of this is we want to be able to see how we can use these shared parameters in order to <clears throat> make these stud and the track talk to each other. So I started by just opening a regular uh, Revit family. So I went to new Revit family and I selected just a regular generic model. So <clears throat> it's just easier to start with uh, the basic types and then we can change the actual properties later. So we're going to start by creating some reference planes. Now because a track type is horizontal, the these two lines here are actually going to represent the length. So we're going to start by equaling these out. And then we're going to add a parameter for these and call it length. Apparently I already have one of those. So we'll just leave it there. And then we'll also equal these ones out. So we want to make sure that it, it offsets evenly. <clears throat> we don't want to set it up on one side because we'll get weird weird things happening when we actually start to change the thickness of this track. So we'll change this. So because this is horizontal, this is actually the web. So we're going to change this to web. And now we need to set up the actual front or where the flange will be on this track. So we're going to create some more reference planes. Create a reference plane here. Select the reference planes. We're going to name this flange. We'll make this uh, to five inches. <clears throat> so there's our basic layout. So to go to the left side. And from here, I guess we'll just start modeling. So we'll go create extrusion. And uh, I'll just draw this in. Lock those up. <clears throat> so again, this is pretty important, making sure that you're locking all your geometry to reference planes. We'll offset. We'll make that uh, one mil. Set these in. And then we'll give these, uh, like we with the stud, we'll give these all a parameter and call it gauge. So notice that when I'm actually creating these dimensions, I'm actually selecting the reference plane first, not the actual line. So ensure that you're, you're selecting this reference plane and then selecting the line. So we'll select all these, give them a parameter, we'll call it gauge. Done. So there's your basic track shape. So uh, it actually doesn't know in which direction, like it doesn't actually have the references set. So we'll actually have to go to the reference level and we can just drag these to the reference planes and lock them in place. <clears throat> so I guess the next thing we can do is we can go into the type properties. So take a look at this and see what we got here. Uh, one thing I forgot to do actually is uh, with my length parameter, we need to make sure that this is actually an instance because we needed to flex and stretch 
we, we want the length to change like we do with our stud height. So we also want the same thing to do with our horizontal height. So you'll see a default here to make sure that it's an instance parameter. So I guess the next thing we can do is we can create some track types. So we'll create a six inch by one and a quarter inch track. We'll create a three and five eighths inch by one and a quarter inch track. And we'll create another one, we'll call it two and a half inch by quarter inch track. Okay. So I think we had th these three types in our other one, so these should match up nice. We'll just change some minor stuff. So we'll make this three and five eighths. And we'll make this one. inches. Now if you have custom tracks, you can always make a different one if you don't have one and a quarter. You, you know, it's pretty simple. You just make it three inch flange, two inch flange. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to go to our six inch track. because That's a pretty standard size. We're going to add a new parameter. And this is where the very important part comes in as to how we get these things to work together. So the reason why we use shared parameters in the last video is because we needed to be able to tell the project that both of these elements need to record a particular parameter. Now, I know this is pretty sounds pretty confusing, but it'll make sense when we actually select these parameters. So we're going to select shared parameter here, say select. We're going to switch to the steel parameters. So this is the parameter box that we used in our last video. You need to make sure you use the same one because sometimes parameter names can be the same, but they'll have different parameter groups. So we're going to start by creating cut length. So this is the exact same parameter we selected for the stud. So we're going to hit OK. Now notice it, it already knows its length, already knows the discipline. You can change where it's located, but that doesn't really matter. So we need this to be an instance, and we also need it to be a reporting parameter. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to hit OK real quick. We're going to draw a dimension from here to here. Now, for this case, you could have done it a different way. You didn't have to do it as a reporting parameter. Uh, you could have just done it as this actual parameter, length parameter. I like to keep them separate because if we need to, you know, do cutbacks or if you know we need to do anything special we want to make sure that we're calculating the right distance uh, i just find it easier to do this way it makes more sense this way to me uh, but if it makes more sense to you to for you to do it that way then then do it that way <clears throat> so uh, we're going to add another parameter we're going to call use from our shared parameters again steel parameters right here we're going to choose part number so this one goes under text. I like to put it under identity data. And we'll keep this as a type because it'll be related directly to the actual track type. So if we go down here, we have our part number here. So uh, we can get assigned this value. I think the value we assigned to the other ones was something similar to uh, six inch by one quarter inch steel track, uh, 20 gauge. I believe that was what it was in the other one. So I'm just going to copy this. Well, I'm going to do this quickly here. It doesn't really matter what part name you actually use here. <clears throat> uh, you would use you know, your specs that you have for yours. Some people have like full digit numbers and, you know, it really depends on what, what you need to accomplish on your project. 
really all this is doing, this is just transferring a text value. So it, it can be any kind of text. It can be, you can call it A, B, C, if you wanted to. <clears throat> uh, so I think that's a good start there. So I'm just gonna change this to consistent colors real quick. Uh, so we need to add a material to this. So we'll find a material within our material list. Let's call it a steel. Don't remember what we used. I'll just pick uh, galvanized. It's a good color. Okay. Apply. And it's not going to really matter because we're going to change this anyways. We're going to make it a parameter. So. You can change it to whatever you want. So we'll make this, uh, what is this track tip and track material? Materials finished, that's fine. So like for instance, let's say you had track types that were galvanized track types that were, uh, you know, a different type of carbon steel or, you know, it really depends on what, what you're trying to do. You can make those new types. So you can say I have a 20 gauge galvanized steel track or I have a 16 gauge galvanized steel track you know you can really play with this however you really want however you really need it to to uh, what you need it to accomplish so the next thing we have to do here is because we've made it a generic model we actually have to go up to here so family category and parameters <clears throat> this is what we changed in the last one in order to make it operate as a steel member because right now it's only being seen as a generic model so we need, we need Revit to see it as an actual structural member. So we'll go to structural framing. That's where we categorize the last one. And we're going to change this from always vertical. We're going to make sure that this is unchecked. Because if that's checked, it means you can't use a track, this track as, let's say, uh, like a box out track or something for a window or an opening. So we want to make sure that this is actually unchecked. But we do want to make sure that we have this this checked here. So make sure that work plane based is checked. Uh, one thing that is <clears throat> actually, you know what? Don't, don't use that. I was going to suggest using this. Don't don't use this. So now we're set as a, a structural track. We have all our track types that we can use with our stud types. We have a cut length that can be used to uh, run calculations through the schedule. We have uh, part numbers to organize by. And uh, we also have a material finish on here. Uh, there are other things that you can do to kind of spice it up a little bit. I think in the last video, we I made it so that way you could change the uh, detail level of it. So if you wanted to show square edges, with medium detail and you wanted to show round edges with a, uh, with a fine detail, you can do that too. Uh, just be weird, like, just be aware that it actually can slow down uh, the speed of the elements because technically you have two extruded elements on top of each other. It actually makes the, the family more dense. So that's something to be aware of as you're working with it. Uh, as far as I can tell, this is this is about as much detail as you need for a track like this. So in the next video, I plan on taking this track and stud type, bringing it into a project, creating a wall assembly out of it, creating a floor assembly out of it, and then showing you how you can actually create, use Revit assemblies, and how you can use uh, schedules to generate uh, part calculations. So I'll see you in the next video.